Hey YouTube, Apostle Stacy Woods here. You're watching Dimensions of Stacy, inviting you guys along for the ride. Um, today is Columbus Day. Why do we still celebrate Columbus? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm grateful for the time off. But honey, y'all held up the mail and everything from being delivered, the trash from being picked up. For somebody who got lost, bumped into some land. Uh, found people there, thought he was in India, and named them Indians. Then took over, you know, and we still celebrating that. But anyway, happy Lost People's Day. <laughs> um, whatever, I'm just taking advantage of this day. It is a beautiful day. And it's still the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we are glad in it. And I'm on my way, actually, to grab a bite to eat and just... um relaxing today i was able to get a lot of ministry things accomplished and a lot of paperwork done and things like that so um today i was productive i also was able to get some rest much needed rest thank god um anyway but i'm just i've just been reflecting on a lot of different things that have been going on in our world and one of the things that has been really heavy on my heart is uh, the people that are suffering from the effects of the government shutdown and the people who have really um, suffered great loss as a result of that. People who have lost jobs, wages, people who are uh, really going through have lost benefits because of that shutdown. And then over the weekend, there was a scare here with the EBT card here as well as 16 other states uh, where the EBT cards were not working at the grocery stores. And even though that does not directly affect me personally, it impacts those that I truly love and those that I know, people that work hard to earn a living and people who are trying to just feed their children, okay? And I feel like the media, like many times, has just really poorly covered that story to, to try to make it seem like everyone who utilizes govern, government um, benefits, that they are, are, are just robbing the system and abusing the system. And listen, I am not ignorant to the fact that there are those who abuse the system and there are those who take advantage of benefits and things like this, but you've got so many people who are benefiting in a positive way from being able to get WIC and uh, EBT and um, the other little benefits that come when people just need that extra push. And I'm going to tell you the, the honest truth. When Hurricane Katrina came and we were displaced, many of you guys know I actually went through Hurricane Katrina, lost a house uh, in Katrina, and we were temporarily displaced. Even though I had money in the bank and resources to assist me, we got issued um, the emergency funds because many of us did not have access to the banks and didn't have access to this stuff. So. We still needed the emergency stuff. And until that time, I couldn't even tell you what an EBT card was. I couldn't even tell you how food stamp looked because God had blessed us like that. But I tell you, um, when you have need of those resources and they're taken away from you or things happen that cause you to not be able to utilize those resources, it sends you into a state of panic. And what it was for me was a wake-up call. Now, people can say I'm being too deep and too spiritual, but that's fine, too. Because to me, it was a wake-up call to the church. Because what I immediately started doing is contacting the other uh, pastors and leaders in the area and uh, pooling together resources and trying to see how we could... Um, you know, get some funds to these people because I had a pastor uh, right at the time that it was happening 
his wife was in the line at the grocery store and there was a lady right before her with a basket of uh, food trying to feed her family. And when she went to swipe her EBT card, it didn't work, you know, and she was in tears because of that situation. And so thankfully God had planted her um, right behind this lady and she was able to um, take care of her grocery bill. And to me, that's what the body of Christ is in position to do. We're not here just gaining wealth and shouting about all of the wealth and the riches that God has given us just to store up things for ourselves. But we're doing it so we can be of assistance to other people. And so that when there is a time of famine, come on, look it up in the word of God. When there is a time of famine, the people of God can rise to the occasion and be of assistance. And that's why I ask God to bless me and bless my ministry. So that I will be able to go into our resources, not for frivolous things, amen, but I'll be able to go into our resources and say, well, it's not much, but here is $50, here is $20, so that you and your family don't have to go hungry tonight. And I'm tearing up while, while, while I'm talking about this because I will say that I was disappointed even with the EBT situation because I reached out to a lot of leaders and few of them responded. My God. And then right after that, I, I started seeing pictures, you know, of folks eating and going out and enjoying themselves during the weekend and shopping. And, and I'm like, you know what? God didn't just bless us so we could wear the finest clothes. And thank God for the things that he allows us to enjoy because we are supposed to live life abundantly. But some of these things that we have um, called abundance is really a waste. Oh, God. Let's just tell the truth. It's really a waste and a misusage of the resources that God has entrusted us with as the body of Christ. We ought to have something in the storehouse in times of emergency like that. And then today I'm reading all kind of reports about how once the uh, people really figured out that their cars were malfunctioning, you had people people going and really taking advantage, just robbing the system blind. I mean, just going and loading up on all kinds of stuff and getting two and three buggies full of, of, of stuff, knowing you, Lord have mercy, you know, cleaning, cleaning whole Walmarts out, you know, because they found out that uh, the car had a glitch in it where even if you um, only had a few dollars left on it, you were able to pretty much go shopping limitlessly, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, shame on those who took advantage of that situation because the day is going to come <laughs> once again where something happens and you're not going to be able to get what uh, you need to feed your family and nobody's going to trust you now because you took advantage of it. You know. Whew. So I'm looking at that thing from both angles and saying, Lord, have mercy on us because see, our world is headed for those type of things and even more. You know, we, we got to get prepared. Um, I was even watching another woman of God here on YouTube and she talked about you know, having a plan B, you know, if you truly care about your family and you truly are responsible for your family's well-being, don't just wait for folks to take care of you. We all fall on hard times. We all fall into tight situations. I don't receive, um, you know, that kind of benefit from the government. But it's been times when I had $10 here, $20 here, you know, and we, we all have seen hard times. And if we happen we can just keep on living but make sure you got a plan b and i like when she said to have a plan b stock up you know grandma had a deep freezer <laughs> so it might not have been what you necessarily wanted to eat but you definitely weren't going to go hungry because she always had a pack of beans and a bag of rice and some noodles and some flour somewhere stored away you could at least get a couple of good meals out of there and you just didn't have to go hungry but that's another thing. We have become dependent. And because we have become so dependent on folks, you know, just taking care of us, many times we don't do what we need to do to make sure 
um, things are taken care of. And it reminds me also of the word of God when he says, you know, you've got to work while it's day because night is coming when no man can work. And that speaks of being prepared, you know, being prepared for the night season. Then it's another scripture that says, consider the ant, thou sluggard, that stores up food for the winter season, you know. Consider the ant, making sure you're diligently working while you can and being a good steward over, even if you got a little, being a good steward over the little so that when the time comes and you have a need, you can tap into those resources that you have stored up. You know, those are all biblical principles that we really don't like to, we don't like to think about those because, of, of course, everybody right now is shouting off of money coming to me right now. But what if there is a delay in your right now and you got to endure the night season? What are you going to do? In the, and I've really been thinking about that saying, Lord, you know, we don't have to spend every dollar we make. We ought to be able to store up something. I'm talking about we. Come on. The older you get, the more mature you ought to get about what you do with your money. My God. I had an opportunity where I just had to decide whether or not I was going to go on this vacation with some friends of mine or whether or not I was going to invest in uh, taking care of some health challenges. And I chose to take care of the health challenges. Now, a couple of years back, I might would have said, okay, we're we going to worry about that later. I'm going to have a vacation. But, you know, the older I get, the more I realize, you know, you got to do better about managing your time, your talents, and your resources. So no matter how limited your resources may be, if you are faithful over the few things, maybe God will be able to trust you to bless you with more. What will you do if God says, okay, I'm about to release to you uh, a million dollars? Well, some of us, because we have no discipline, the million dollars will be gone in two weeks and we still will be looking for a way to pay the light bill. So I'm asking God, Lord, help us to be diligent and be responsible. And that's something you're going to have to learn how to do, especially if you didn't grow up, you know, with that kind of, example before you but I'm thankful that I had that kind of example that I had parents that knew how to save and knew how to store up grandparents who knew how to save up they're living right now off of their retirement you know so I you know people of God as I've just been thinking about that and meditating on that I've been thinking about the fact that it is harvest time and that we are now in the position in which we are beginning to reap everything that we have planted this year. That could be a good thing, depending on what you planted. That could be a bad thing. I want to read good things, but I got to look back and see what kind of seeds have I sown in the ground. You got to know what season it is. I always get excited around this time of year because you can physically see the manifestation of the changing of the season. The weather is changing. The trees were here where I am. It's still warm. You see how I'm dressed. And really, I don't even have to have this jacket on because it's really not even cool enough to wear a jacket. But I just have it on because it's fall and I kind of want to look like I'm in the fall a little bit. But anyway, um, the leaves are starting to change. And in the morning, they got a little coolness in the air. And nighttime has a little coolness in the air. Get a little breeze blowing through to let you know, glory to God, that the seasons are changing. And this is my favorite time of the year because the weather is pleasant. And it's also the time where my best memories have been made because I was born around this time of the year. And a time of family, time of holidays, time of warm, comforting memories. And um, this is harvest time. And, you know, I come from a generation of people that my grandfather made gardens and planted gardens. And he knew what time of year to plant crops. And he knew when to start looking for those crops to start coming up. And as I began to think about the process of going and tilling up the land and making the rows and planting the seed and then fertilizing the ground and then keeping the ground from bugs and pests 
and from weeds and things that were there to choke up the ground. You know, that's a very biblical type of thing. You know, when you look at the Word of God, it talks about um, how there was wheat that was sown among, I mean, there was tares or uh, wheat that was sown among the wheat. And that speaks of the fact that while we're sleeping sometimes and while we're not diligent, being diligent to look out to see what's being sown in our ground, you know, we can see weeds popping up. And even if you study wheat and you study tear, you'll realize that tear looks just like wheat uh, when it's first developing. But then when it matures, you can tell the difference between the two. And that's a whole nother message. <laughs> but um, as I began to meditate on that, I began to meditate on the fact that God has given us a divine opportunity to sow the right seeds in the ground so that in the time of harvest, we don't have to stress about what's coming up. We can begin to, to reap what we have sown. And I'm not just talking about naturally, I'm talking about spiritually. If you have been diligent to save a little bit, you don't have to go into a panic when emergencies come. Spiritually speaking, if you sow the right seed spiritually, if you study the word and spend time with the Lord in prayer and fasting, when you go through a tumultuous time or a challenging situation, you don't have to struggle with whether or not you are in right standing with God. You can go back to when you have prayed and when you have labored and when you have worked for the Lord. And you can say, God, you know, I'm your faithful servant. And I pray that you will work in my favor in this situation. And he will bless you. Ask me how I know. So many times, glory to God. I have had to go and make a withdrawal on the seeds that I have sown. I had to say, Lord, I've been serving you, my God, since my young childhood years. Look on your servant right now and see about your child. And God has blessed me, not because of my own goodness, but because of his mercy and his grace to keep me. But also because of making good, sound, and godly decisions to sow seeds of righteousness, amen, to do the right thing, to treat people right, to do right to people, amen, then you are able to reap from that harvest, so I've gone on and gone on and gone on, and I've arrived at the restaurant <laughs> where I'm um, eating tonight, and I want you all just to meditate and think about what I shared with you. I, I promise you, if we just learn how to do right, God will help us. God will help us to be able to one day reap um, the seeds that we have sown. And you all be blessed. Continue to enjoy Jesus and all his joys. Thank you for making ministry possible. You all be blessed during this time of harvest. I pray God's abundance for you and his riches and choices blessings. Bye-bye.